Hello, my name is Andrew. On behalf of my team, Claudia, Tara, Jess, and Mitch, I would like to introduce you to BioShield. Artificial insulin is the required treatment for millions of people living with diabetes worldwide. The quality of this insulin is especially important to properly and predictably lower diabetic patients' blood sugar to normal levels. To ensure this quality, insulin needs to be stored within very specific and narrow temperature ranges. However, it has been found that current conventional storage methods are insufficient in achieving these ranges consistently. A 2019 study found that insulin vials stored in the fridge were out of the temperature range 11.3% of their total storage time, some of that being below the freezing mark. Another study found that only 50% of insulin carried as a spare was within the right temperature. This length of time spent outside of the ideal range is extremely damaging for the microstructure of the insulin, decreasing its potency and thus its effectiveness. This puts the user at risk as they may be unknowingly injecting themselves with insulin that may no longer be viable, which can in turn lead to life-threatening conditions associated with elevated glucose levels. These conditions include episodes of hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis, which were caused by improper insulin storage 39.2% of the time, according to the same 2019 study. At BioShield, we decided something needed to be done, and therefore set out to design a storage solution within a scope that is well described by a list of constraints and criteria shown below. These will be described in more detail in the following slides. The temperature of the insulin must be maintained between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius and be protected from both natural and artificial light at all times. The device must hold a charge for at least 24 hours to last one full day of travel, and be large enough to hold three insulin vials to provide enough insulin supply for long duration travel. The insulin must be protected against everyday non-misuse conditions. And finally, the device must comply with medical device and safety standards, IEC 61508 and IEC 6601. Also in alignment with the scope, a list of criteria was outlined. The cost, size, weight, and power consumption was to be minimized. The device should be easy to use to remain accessible to any user with diabetes. The device should be aesthetically pleasing to increase marketability. And finally, the device reliability was to be optimized through the use of durable materials and well-developed technology. The design process began with the problem definition. The initial problem identified was strict temperature requirements for medicine and the inconveniences and risks associated with them. The scope was then narrowed to focus specifically on the storage requirements of insulin. From there, more information was gathered surrounding regulations and existing solutions. Following this, the concept generation phase began where constraints and criteria for the project were defined based on client needs and key design challenges. Next, the concept evaluation phase was completed where a solution was selected using decision matrices divided into three main aspects, method of thermoregulation, method of insulation, and device geometry. Each design option was evaluated against the criteria listed earlier. A preliminary design was then modeled using SOLIDWORKS, and initial material selection was done. Functionality and safety analysis were conducted by ANSYS and hand calculations, and continued research was done through all testing and modifications. Finally, the final design was reached and validated through further simulations and detailed drawings with specific tolerancing. After the criteria used in the decision matrices allowed for a preliminary design to be formulated with the main alternatives decided, it was determined that further research would be conducted using software to create design models and ensure that outline constraints and criteria could be appropriately followed. The main software modeling programs used were SOLIDWORKS and ANSYS. SOLIDWORKS was first used to assist in deciding on the dimensions of our device. One of our criteria was that the, our device's size must be minimized, and thus we were able to use SOLIDWORKS to accurately model the parts that we already had dimensions for, such as the vials, and then use those as a reference to build the rest of the device. SOLIDWORKS was also used to make a preliminary design model to be used with the existing materials and dimensions in ANSYS, as well as to make the final design to display what the overall model would look like with associated drawings. ANSYS was mainly used as a method to determine the temperature distribution across the device while keeping the insulin vials at a constant temperature of 4 degrees Celsius 
and finding the heat transfer out of the interior under three different ambient conditions. This software allowed for us to determine the proper thermoelectric devices and batteries needed to account for different extremes and to also compare the results to calculations of heat transfer done by hand. Our final design is a rectangular prism shape with a hinged top and zipper closure. Interlocking rubber pieces on the base and lid ensure a tight seal. The device is comprised of an inner and outer stainless steel shell separated by a vacuum and held apart by two small rubber supports. The device can house up to three insulin vials, each surrounded by foam to both cushion and encourage the transfer of heat between the vials and thermoelectric coolers, which are on two sides of the vials. Cavities in the foam for the vials are present in the base and lid of the device so that when the lid is lifted, the vials protrude above the base, making them easier to access. The tech pack sits beside the vials. It has foam insulation on the side closest to the vials and heat sinks on the other three vertical sides. The plastic cover of the tech pack encompasses the battery, controller, and temperature sensor for the battery. On the top face of the pack, there's a temperature display, LED, and power button. The LED and temperature display are visual indicators that the device is on and functioning. The power button is flush with the surface when off and recessed when on. It is also covered by a removable plastic shield so that it is not accidentally pressed. An exterior charging port allows the user to easily recharge the device. The use of vacuum insulation was chosen as the primary method of passive insulation because it allows for the least amount of heat transfer. Stainless steel was used as our base material due to its properties of being strong as well as ductile. A rectangular prism shape was chosen over a cylindrical one because it allows for easier access of the vials and is more likely to be seen as a medical device as opposed to being mistaken for a water bottle. The lid was designed as a hinge top located on the second smallest side of the device. This was done because it makes the surface area exposed to the environment when opened limited while still allowing for an easy access of all three vials and the power supply. Thermoelectric coolers were our choice of thermoregulation because they are lightweight and have low power requirements suitable for the amount of heat they will be required to remove or add to the insulin vials with the added heat conductive effects of the foam interior and insulation effects of the vacuum sealed stainless steel layers. Six thermoelectric devices were used in the final design as shown here in an arrangement of two cascaded groups of three devices in parallel. Because thermoelectric devices can act as both a refrigeration tool and a heat pump, depending on the direction of current, the setup will have two connections to the battery to account for extreme hot and cold outside temperature conditions. The use of this many thermoelectric devices ensures an equal amount of heat transfer for each file and creates a low power requirement helping to sustain the life cycle. The power source used to power this arrangement will be two 1.5 volt rechargeable lithium ion batteries with a 3000 milliamp hour capacity each. Based on the results of the ANSYS simulation to the extreme temperature conditions of 32 degrees Celsius, the maximum power requirement would require a voltage and current from the battery as follows. Ensuring the specifications of the chosen batteries would provide sufficient power for effective use in combination with thermoelectrics and also constitute a reliable device. In terms of safety and reliability, standards IEC 61508 and IEC 60601 surrounding functional safety of electrical and medical device equipment were considered during the design of the device. To ensure compliance with these standards, many mechanisms were put in place. The selection of durable stainless steel prevents the material from shattering if dropped, protecting the electronics and insulin inside, and ensuring no pieces will break off and cause injury. Insulating and encasing the electronics eliminates risk of electrocution and exposure to moisture. Safety sensors on the battery and insulin vials monitor temperature ranges during operation and alert the user if unsafe temperatures are entered. Finally, the design of the power controls eliminates accidentally turning the device on or off. Socially, this solution offers many benefits. Firstly, approximately 415 million people live with diabetes, with the global prevalence continuing to rise year after year. Rates of diabetes increase with age, as well as differ between different ethnicities. It is evident that this disease is widespread and that its onset is not limited to a certain population. Thus, many would significantly benefit from better insured insulin quality. Additionally, the need for a more reliable storage solution has become ever apparent amid rising insulin costs and the heavy financial burden diabetes continues to place on the healthcare system. 
Diabetic patients within the United States specifically spend an estimated $5,700 per year on insulin alone and incur an estimated $327 billion in both direct and indirect health care costs. Lessening this financial demand by any extent through our device is extremely desirable as it benefits both those with diabetes as well as society as a whole. Finally, current diabetic patients may face potential psychological factors leading to a detriment of self-image by feeling socially awkward using or being seen with insulin in public. One study found that patients who are more actively involved in diabetic self-care and are less concerned about their body image were more likely to have optimal glycemic control as opposed to those who viewed using insulin as an inconvenience. The aesthetic appeal and easy operation of the proposed solution was carefully considered so that the patient can feel comfortable using the device in a social setting, thus improving their glycemic control. In terms of the environment, providing a means to better ensure insulin effectiveness will greatly reduce waste associated with the disposal of spoiled insulin caused by improper storage. There are an estimated 415 million patients with diabetes worldwide. This provides a large target market for the product that is easily scalable. It was determined that the battery had the shortest life expectancy of five years before needing to be replaced. Thus, our team analyzed the life cycle costing over a five-year period, including capital costs and equivalent annual costs of operation and maintenance. This included production space, marketing, and labor for 10,000 units with an average increase of 10% each year, which we felt was an achievable goal based on our production capacities and market size. We also analyzed the cost and revenue of each unit to produce a sales forecast in the five years to come. Here we have displayed our five-year sales forecast, including life cycle costing from the analysis just previously mentioned. Three projections are displayed, the black representing the total profit based on our estimation of 10,000 units sold, plus a 10% average increase each year, while the dark and light blue represent a sensitivity analysis of plus or minus 20% of the estimated sales. From the graph, the payback period is about three years without much variation when factoring in the sensitivity analysis. While all simulations and calculations of temperature regulation have been completed, the device still needs to be tested in real-life situations to ensure that it can regulate temperature in the specified range and the battery can last 24 hours. The device must also undergo misuse testing to ensure its durability in misuse conditions of daily activities. To study risks in commercialization, we will look at the SWOT analysis for the product. Our product is priced $10 higher per unit than the market average and requires charging. However, in comparison to our competitors, our product has an active thermoelectric component and thus can hold the insulin in a narrow temperature range and for longer periods of time. Our next steps for this product are to implement a customizable outer case to boost the aesthetic appeal and add areas within the device to store other supplies that diabetic patients commonly carry around. Our long-term goal is to make this case available for other medications that require temperature regulation but always need to be on hand, such as nitroglycerin for those with chronic heart conditions and EpiPens for those with severe allergic reactions. To conclude, current at-home and on-the-go storage solutions for insulin have proven to be unreliable at maintaining insulin within its specific storage conditions. Therefore, at BioShield, we created a device that will preserve insulin's potency and thus its effectiveness, which will in turn safeguard the health of the millions of insulin users worldwide.